What's up, America? And Neil here from Jungle Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. Today we are going to do a comparison video on handheld flashlights. For those that follow me, you know I'm a huge proponent of handheld flashlights. I think they're, I even have a video called the most underrated self-defense tool out there. Flashlights do it all, uh, far more valuable to you as a user than a, a weapon mounted light. And so today we're going to look at three different price points starting from uh, $200 and up or a little bit over $200, around $100 and less than $20. We'll compare them all and then we'll do a little, little night shooting. So let's get started. From most expensive to least expensive, we have starting out here, we have the Surefire. This is called the PX2 Fury with IntelliBeam, which we'll talk about that. And then we have the Streamlight ProTech HL, ProTech HL. And then we have the J5 V1 Pro. Okay, so once again, around 200, around 100, and under 20. All the specific prices and the links for all these products are gonna be there along with all the coupon codes. So if you like any of these, uh, you can take advantage of those. They'll be in the description. But just so you understand, those are the three that we're gonna be looking at today. Plus there's a little bonus because um, through my testing, I, I wanted to throw another one in there. So this is the Fury IntelliBeam. And if you look at the actual lens of it, you'll see a little kind of black, I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, but it looks like a little black, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But it's a, basically, it's a sensor. Um, I don't know the whole science behind it, but this IntelliBeam basically determines the distance of the object. So hopefully this won't throw the camera off too much. But if I get really close to something, it, it has a much lower setting. And then as I would move out, which this isn't going to be far enough, but as I move out, if I went to uh, shine it on the wall, then the beam gets more intense. All right, so that's kind of a, uh, this is the first time I've used this particular flashlight with that. It's a, it's a pretty cool technology. I don't know that it really turns it down enough when you're really that close. If I wanted to read a map, this thing is going to be really, really bright. Um, I would prefer hard settings, but nonetheless, it's a cool, cool feature, and I'm sure that technology will develop. The flashlight itself, as far as construction goes, it is uh, extremely well made. The a metal, the feel, the, I think it's aircraft aluminum, but the, the, the strength and integrity of the light is, is really nice. I do like uh, with most of the Surefire products, you can back the tail cap off and then uh, it makes the, it renders the button useless so it won't actually get accidentally turned on if you're going to put this in a bag and then you just tighten it down and um, you're back. Now, as far as all flashlights that I'm looking for, uh, other than quality, I like the fact that it has a tail clap switch that has a momentary on. That is huge for me. I don't want to do the clicky, clicky, click. Okay? So this will do both, which is great, because sometimes if you're doing work on something and you want the light to illuminate by itself, by pressing on the button, it'll just stay on. But you can just touch it on and re release it, the momentary on. Okay? And you can see there the, the brightness, how it's changing there. Uh, so fit and finish on this is fantastic. I've done, uh, I've put all the lights underwater except for one of them. They function fine. I left them outside, let them freeze. No issues whatsoever. So this is the Surefire. It's around 200 bucks and it has the IntelliBeam feature. This is the Streamlight, again, ProTac HL. This guy, again, uh, is extremely well made, just like the Surefire, which is one of the things I find most interesting. I would say that from feel alone, they're, they're indistinguishable. They are both built like a tank. The Streamlight, which has always been one of my favorite lights because I think they offer an excellent value. Um, I don't really think that paying more money for a light, you're really getting any better quality, to be honest. But uh, this is an excellent, uh, excellent build. This has the 10-tap the, uh, uh, system or uh, yeah 10 tap and so basically it's a programmable switch here at the base that will allow you to set the flashlight up uh, any way you want to so for me I just want the flashlight to come on always at full go and I can make adjustments if I want so um, if I wanted to change that for example and have it come on in a different setting like automatically low setting whatever the case is that's all easily adjustable it does have a slightly bezeled uh, uh, crowned uh, bezel rather Nothing I would really call it defensive, uh, but it does have a little bit of a, a cutout there. I would say this is more or less uh, if you were just trying to illuminate something very close, like you, it was really dark and you just wanted to kind of illuminate the area around here to read something, you can do that even on full setting without blinding yourself. 
Um, it also has the strobe feature, so I don't know if the camera's going to do this, but if you press the tail cap switch quickly, as you can see there, it's, it uh, hits the strobe feature. You could, again, through the 10 tap, set that up to be strobe automatically. I've never been a big fan of it because I think it's just as disorienting for the shooter as it is the uh, attacker. Uh, but again, it doesn't have that IntelliBeam on there. It's just your standard setup, but it has uh, all the different settings. It has three different levels, all the way down to, I believe it is 30 lumens. Let me see. I believe it's down to 30 lumens, but regardless, uh, it, it does have the settings to adjust the brightness. It has a really nice metal clip that's attached to it uh, that you could use to clip to your, your clothing. But it also comes with one of these uh, nylon pouches, and, you know, it's, it's not uh, Kydex or anything like that, but it'll do the job. You can put it on your, on your belt and be able to access your light. You can put it in either way. I like, to run, uh, I like to run mine with the lens down so that when I go to, when I go to grab it out, it's already kind of in that uh, position. So you can run it both with this, with this nylon. That's nothing fantastic, but it, it comes with the light and uh, just adds to its value. So again, this one's going to be around that $180 to $100 price point. So then we have the J5 Tactical. This is again V2 that, or V1. There is a V2 that is out there. First impressions, I've, uh, this is the first time I've ever seen this brand or their products. The construction is actually pretty, pretty solid. I mean, it, uh, it feels like a well-made flashlight. It does have some very aggressive uh, crown, uh, crown bezel there. Mm, oh, I think almost to the point where if you were to take this to any type of secured area, the airport, anybody that has metal detectors, I don't think they'd let that fly. I, if I were running a security team, I would be asking somebody why they didn't take that from somebody. That's a little too much for me, but that's just my opinion. However, for your purposes, for self-defense, that is a, a heck of a heck of a tool there. I mean, you could really do some damage with that. Uh, it's got a clip here with the two screws on there, pretty tight. A couple things that I dislike about this, and again, this is the one that's basically 20 bucks or less, so I mean, what do you, what do you really want? Um, I don't like the fact there is no pressure cap. It's a tail cap switch, but it has to be clicked on, it has to be clicked off. I also dislike any type of adjustments on a flashlight for that, uh, for self-defense. And this one has this, uh, I'll show you, you'll probably be able to see it, um, the camera focus on that. So then I can pull this, the lens, I'm not moving the flash, I'm literally just moving the lens, and it kind of pinpoints it. And literally when it gets really far out, it actually looks like a square when it shined on something. And what I'm doing now with the light off, you'll be able to see, I'm just pulling this up. And I, I'm just not a fan of that. That's the way it's going to be used, especially if you have to use it for defensive purposes. I, I don't know. I just don't see the point of, of that. I would, I would much rather they made that fixed and made it stronger than this. I think that's going to be the weak point that's going to eventually give out. That said, though, uh, one of the nice things about this guy is the batteries itself. They, uh, they run on the one AA, so obviously very easy to find batteries in that particular case. It does have an O-ring on there. I didn't take uh, the other ones off. Oops, trying to run away from me. I didn't take the other ones off, uh, but I think that's a given. All Streamlight and all uh, Surefire products are going to have an O-ring, if not two O-rings in there. I will tell you this. Uh, it's, a, it's a good flashlight for a utility, like if you're going to throw it in your like, gear bag or your truck or just something you don't care about, if, you know, tackle box, something like that. I found these uh, Bushnells <clears throat> at Walmart that I would, uh, I would take all day long. Uh, for pr pretty much the same price point. You can see this one is beat to heck. I think I talked about this a couple times on there. This one I've had so long I actually broke the, the little pocket clip off and everything. They tell you that this light is 300 lumens. I am calling total BS. There is no way this is 300 lumens. This is only 100 and it's brighter. I guarantee it. Okay, so as you can see, it's pretty dark as hell out here. This is a real uh, technical challenge for us with the cameras and the lights since cameras love light and we have none. But we're going to be testing the two flashlights in uh, actual shooting. So again, we're going to do the um, Surefire Fury and Telebeam and the Streamlight. I'm just going to take a couple of shots. It's just like uh, after you've done this for a while, it's kind of like sitting in your car. You know where you want your tilt steering and your seatbelt and your height and all that good stuff. We've done this many, many, many times. 
but I'm just going to give you my impressions of both lights uh, through some actual shooting. So let's do this. So I know you guys can see it's nothing but darkness, but I'm going to go ahead and shine. This is the stream fire where I'm sorry, the uh, stream light. We're, I don't know, about seven yards away. So you can kind of see what that looks like. And I'll leave that light on for a second, see if the camera will adjust. So this is the stream, uh, stream light in our shooting, uh, in our shooting comparison. And now we're going to do, yep. now we're going to do the Surefire next. That's the IntelliBeam, uh, the Surefire, which I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick it up or not, but what happens is when you turn the light on, it kind of starts a little dimmer and then it brightens up. I'm going to try and show you. It may not pick it up, but basically the flashlight is determining its distance and it gets brighter uh, as it determines it's further out. So it's like a little bit of a half second delay there, which is kind of unusual. Um, something I got to get used to. Okay, so here's the Surefire. Yeah, test for our live fire. One thing I found that was interesting about this test is that the, the stream light, which I prefer, actually the, I don't know what you want to call it, the rear bezel, the, the base of the flashlight basically, the uh, rear cap here sticks up past the rubber uh, actuating light. So it's actually difficult if you're going to use the cigar method like I like to actually hit that button. It, it, it's, it's, you really got to jam your thumb on there and the pad of your thumb. Whereas in the Surefire, it's, it sticks up uh, much higher than the back and it's super easy to hit. I think that if I were going to use the, um, the Streamlight, um, I would just ad adapt my light method uh, the way I would hold it a little differently. We'll talk about that uh, later on in a training class on, on low light. But just understand I do prefer the actual Surefire uh, button sticking out um, past the base over the Surefire. Uh, but again, as far as the dislike on the Surefire is that that beam comes out kind of dim-ish and then brightens up as it determines distance, which is kind of, uh, it's different. It's not bad. It would still work. It's just a little different where this one is instantly at its highest setting. So uh, pretty cool little uh, comparison there. Realistically, if you're going to have any comparison at all, it's going to be between these two. No one's going to compare a $200 light to a $20 light. Uh, it's just another option. So I wanted to give you guys kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of these two lights because they're going to be the, the kind of the, the two that are going to compete with one another. So this over here, this one here is the Streamlight, and this is the Surefire. So you can see that the Surefire is, I don't know, we'll call that a half an inch or so uh, taller. The bezels are the same, which I believe are one and a half. They're the exact same diameter. The the grip on them, both they're both uh, identical as well. The feel in the hand is the same. If you want it, of course, you can remove this clip, and uh, if you if you just want to have it handheld, I would say this is this is going to be a little. Both of these are going to be too big that you'd be clipping them in your pocket. Realistically, this would be something you'd wear outside in in a, a magazine. I mean, um, a flashlight pouch or the one it comes with. But either way, for actual defensive lights to light, light something up that we're going to shoot at, these are awesome. And you can't go wrong with either one. Honestly, it really depends on, honestly, which brand you like because they're both phenomenal. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. You know by now you can find us on Facebook, and we love Facebook likes. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and you'll be notified every time I put out new videos. Until next time, you know what's coming, here it is. It's always better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.